Conor McGregor is guilty of announcing that he's running for president of Ireland. We'll explain next. Broadcasting live from an undisclosed location. This is the TC MMA podcast with your host, Chris Cross. Whoa! <laughs> Dana White Privilege. Let's go, baby! Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, baby! Dana White Privilege. 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 Welcome to the TCMMA Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Cross, and we waited for everything to hit, you know, hit the airwaves. Let me see what everybody's talking about, and let me sit back, process Conor McGregor's situation, and then talk about it. And what is what is McGregor guilty of? He's guilty of announcing that he's running for president. McGregor, why would you announce that you're running for president? I'm sure you just said it out of nowhere. You're just running off the mouth a little bit. You got the fighting going on. You would be KFC. You got the proper 12. And it's like, you know, what? I'm running for president. Everybody's seeing what Trump's doing. I'm running for president. But guess what? There's people that took that seriously. There's people that took that literally and make no mistake, McGregor is a threat because he's popular. And how do you bring that popularity down? You just saw it. You see it. It's playing out in real time. 56% of the people, when polled, are saying they're unsure. And then it's like 50-50, whether yes, he did something or no, he didn't. But more than half the people are unsure. So you already put something in their head. So he's guilty of announcing that he's running for president. If you learned anything here, either don't get into politics or be ready to go to battle. Because this is politics. I just saw Gladiator 2 today. And uh, (laughs) Denzel Washington in a scene is more or less talking about like one of the emperors gets taken out. I believe it was by Denzel. And he said, that's politics. And I'm like, man, in the Roman days, that was politics. Well, this is politics. You don't have to use the sword no more. All you got to do is put a guy all over the news and make people second guess him. Now, let's be clear. Do I know what happened that night? Absolutely not. Do I believe this is the first time that D. Devlin, his fiance, is hearing about all this? You don't think McGregor, when all this is coming into into the news, had a talk with her and probably owned up to everything? Or he sat her down and told her, I didn't do anything, right? But he can't say that now because he's already come out and said he shouldn't have stepped out on her, right? He shouldn't have stepped out on her. Then he went on a rant. Uh, on social media as well. Went on a rant. Wrote in a recent post, two men falsely accused, one vindicated, the other soon to be. Congrats, James Lawrence, on absolute exoneration. Twice this heinous accusation was put to you and twice it was shown as false lies. It is absolute, absolutely disgraceful what they put you through there or here. Disgraceful. I look forward to seeing you further vindicate yourself and lambast Those responsible in court, we know what happened that night. Everyone present present knows, yet it was ignored. Every single statement of persons present on the night was ignored. And they all disputed uh, her lies. So, you know, and of course, the accuser responds and all that stuff. (laughs) Slap in the face all women and things of that nature. So, but yeah. I mean, it, let's make this real simple. Conor McGregor is guilty of announcing that he's running for president. As soon as you make that announcement, 
Something's coming out. Against anyone who runs for president. And they might have done it. That's why Trump was unstoppable this election. It's like everything already came out. And he ran right through it. It's locker room talk. Now, this is a little bit different of a situation. Let's keep it real. But Trump ran through all that. This is something you're not going to be able to run through. This is something that is going to stop you right in your tracks. But again, it's not even a question of whether you did it or not. It's that maybe you did it. Maybe you did it. And that's all that you got to put in people's heads uh, to bring a person down in the public eye. Now, notice they didn't, they didn't go f- towards a criminal lawsuit. They just went civil. It's just civil. And there's a price to be paid. You want to announce that you're running pr- uh, for president? Here's the price you have to pay. And again, maybe, I keep saying this, maybe something happened, maybe it didn't. If it didn't happen, it doesn't matter. If it did happen, they'll use it at a time like this to, it's like something that's being held back. And then when we need it, if you don't think these people in politics are aware that somebody may be running for president and we got to have something on them and keep it right now, card up your sleeve, if you will. To me, that's what's going on. I don't have any proof of that. I don't know. But when I'm watching all the all the articles come out and the way they're written, and I know it's for clicks, I get all that. And when I watch what people are saying on podcasts and all that, I get all that. It's time to blast McGregor. That's exactly what they want you to do. And if he did do it, shame on him. And, and the fact that he put his uh, fiance through this, because it seems like something happened, right? For McGregor to be responding like I shouldn't have stepped out on her. But people were looking at, at his fiance and saying, did you see her expression when he was found guilty? If you don't think she already knew and got McGregor's side of the story and whatever he said she's going with, and if he did something, you know, she's probably hurt, uh, disappointed is in the public eye. Now that it's guilty, it's like it's in the public eye that something probably occurred. So she's feeling all that. If he didn't do it, she's still going to believe he didn't do it. See what I'm saying? Whatever was discussed behind the scenes is going to stay true. I'm sure he told her he did it and he apologized. And not that that's good enough or ever will be, but I think if I had to guess, that's the way that it probably played out. But this is not a good look for McGregor. I mean, it's just not a good look for Conor McGregor. And where do you go from here? Not politics. He's already saying the right thing. Let me get back into the fight game. See, there's all these codes that are at play, right? Like like when Trump won the election and and his, his acceptance, his speech where, you know, okay, victory speech. He's saying, can you believe that's my last rally? There'll never be another rally. Well, of course there will be. There'll be midterms and all that. But he's saying that as a code to let the other side know, calm down. I'm not a dictator. There's not going to be any more rallies for president. This is it. I got four years. Code words. That a lot of times I miss, you miss, we all miss. But it's really projected to the other side who's viewing the victory speech in a different way. They're angry. They're upset. They're like, Trump might be a dictator. This is what we were told for the last two years before the election. You know, he's going to be a dictator. He's going to be this. He's going to be that. So they're in fear. So Trump sends them a message and just says, that was my last rally. Okay. Cool everything down. I see what he did there. McGregor's saying, I'm back in the gym. I'll be ready to fight in no time. And who knows with the, now looking back with the Chandler fight and the broken toe and all that, all this stuff was probably going on. Uh, You go back and watch the Dana White press conferences and it's like, he's not fighting until like 2025. It's going to be a long time. And you're like, what? I thought it was just a broken toe. Like what's going on here? Some don't sound right. And the media doesn't know either trying to figure this stuff out. 
But Dana White knows what's going on. McGregor knows what's going on. Michael Chandler, I would say he's in the dark, which is why he sounded the way he did about the fight not happening. Oh, he broke his toe. Wah, you know, type of thing. So now it all makes sense why he didn't fight this year, why he didn't fight against Michael Chandler, why it's been usually after the ultimate fighter, they fight within four to six months. The fight's already announced. I mean, you got all, it's just, you know, all this stuff had to play a factor. Not to say McGregor didn't really break his toe, right? But when you're watching Dana White say, you know, it's like mid 2024 and he's saying not till like 2025, it's going to, you know, down the road, down the road. Let's talk about something else. It's like, what? looking back, it's like, what did you know? Obviously, you knew something. And if you're McGregor, you got to tell him. But just an unfortunate thing all the way around. I truly believe the fact that he announced he's running for president made this thing <sighs> come out even more so, hurt him even more. And it's like, we got to send you a message, big dog. Big dog. You're barking too loud, big dog. We got to send you a message. Calm down. Calm down. All right, get down. Right? This is what you tell the dog. Get down. Get down. Sit. I said, sit. Sit your butt down. Right? Dog's not listening. McGregor, you're not listening. Okay. Sit your butt down. Go back to running around outside and acting crazy all you want throughout all the world on the yacht, in the house, on social media. But don't come over here in this politics stuff, man. Don't come over here in this politics stuff. You better sit your butt down. <laughs> this is what's happening, y'all. That's my belief. That's my opinion. This is what's going on. Don't announce you're running for president. Even if you're out one night on the town and you're feeling good, just don't do it, man. Don't get in, involved. Stick to the fight game until you're 40. And then if you get older, if you're ready to do something like this, fine. But now it's it's made it tough on them. I mean, look at the Trump nominee for uh, uh, depart what department was that? criminal justice, whatever department that is. I just draw on a blank right now, but the guy had to step down, man. Department of Justice, I think. Guy had to step down. This type of stuff will stop you in your tracks. Whether something happened or it didn't. Because it's, it's like for the people, well, maybe something happened. And nobody can get close to you. See, that's the whole thing is uh, all the fleas have, have flown away. Nobody can get close to McGregor because maybe something happened. Sounds like he was definitely there. So maybe something happened. So th th this is the thing that's going on right now. And McGregor's got to sit down like a good puppy. I know he doesn't want to hear that, but this is what they made happen. And, uh, Trump is a type that, you know, you try to tell him to get down and sit down. He's just going to, he's going to bite your arm. But you got to understand by the time Trump was told to sit down and he bit the arm, he's already fired up. So he's not trying to hear that. You know, you get a dog in a different zone and he's not even trying to hear about sit down. He, he, he's going on the attack and, and Trump went on the attack from day one. McGregor is not there in life right now. You still got a lot to lose, my man. And you're still young. You hit 50, 55. And you get your life in order. And you start raising your kids. And everything's going well. And you have a bunch of businesses. And it looks like you're successful. And you're not shooting yourself in the foot every week. Then that's when you go for it. Because now they don't have as much on you. There's still going to be something. I mean, dang, there's still going to be something. If you're on the wrong side of the media, there's going to be something. They're going to punch you in the face. They're going to land some jabs. They're going to, they're going to counter. They're going to throw combos. It's all, all that's going down. But when you're 50, 55, it's a little bit better because now you're a little bit older. You're more seasoned. 
they can look back and say, yeah, he's probably wild in his 20s and 30s. I mean, he was a UFC fighter, but now he's 50, 55. He's got the family. The kids are all grown up. They're in college. They're doing good. Things like that, man. You present yourself as a much different person. I mean, and this is the thing is he's viewed as a threat, but is he really? I mean, it's like, dude, the guy's running around. He's acting crazy. You can't put him in the presidency right now. But when he's 50, 55 and his life's in order, his house is in order, maybe he could be the president because he's got the popularity. He'd be a populist president. That's the bottom line. But right now, McGregor's got to sit down. That's just the way it goes. Listen, quick podcast. I wasn't expecting this, but uh, had to jump into it at some point. We left it out of yesterday's on purpose because I just wanted to see more time and how people are going to respond. And then I'll weigh in. But for now, listen, hope you have a good rest of your week. Happy Thanksgiving. If we don't see you until after that, it's your boy, Chris Cross. Have a great night and God bless. Peace.